All right, so I, I've been recording at my desk. I've got a little caddy here that I have made. It holds an old cell phone. You can see the little gap for the wires to come out. Screws into a uh, horizontal tripod adapter that I've got. And it holds my phone facing down over the work. Now, recently, I've noticed when I record on this, I don't have the greatest lighting effects. So I intend to change that. Uh, what I intend on doing here is adding a flange that sticks out on the side all the way around. I'm going to have it poke out eh, about two centimeters, maybe a bit less, and affix some LED strip to it that points down. Some really nice CRI, high CRI LEDs so that my subject matter is well lit. So this is that. I'm going to make the thing when I print it. I think I'm going to print it out of ABS. Because the LEDs too do tend to get a little bit warm. And ABS will be more resilient. So, let's start. Let's put a sketch there. Um... What's good? Two millimeters thick? Let's do three. Hmm, you know what? Before I do that, let's measure from there to there. Well, that can't be right. Hmm. What am I doing wrong? That says 84.3 millimeters is the distance. It's eight centimeters. I can't be right. All right. Well, we'll close that and we'll just wing it. Let's, uh, let's extrude this 10. Yeah, exactly. I had to learn to mute that thing. We'll do the same thing here. We'll create a rectangle. Three millimeters tall. What? Grab. Let's try that again. I don't know what I did wrong. Let's 
All right, two point rectangle from the corner to there, three millimeters tall. Extrude that 10. Do another one here, 381. Extrude 10. All right, now I'm not sure how this is going to work around this adapter, so we're just going to see what there is to see. All right. Huh. Looks perfect to me. All right, so let's take that. And let's extrude that to object. Come on. There. Make it a join. Yeah. Uh, so far, so good. Whoa. Let's extrude that to there. It's going to be, you know what, so let's do it this way. We'll grab that and we'll extrude to object there. Join. Yeah. We'll just do that all the way around. All right, that's not too shabby. Let's uh, fill up those corners. Oh, that rotation is so funny.
10 millimeter radius. I could work with that. Uh, let's hit OK on that and we will do a save as. All right. I'm gonna pause this video and go queue up the ABS in the printer and we'll get to slicing and sending it off. All right, so the ABS is queued up. Let's go locate the body. Oh, start my Cura. All right, so we're going to right click the body. Save as STL, but instead of saving it, we're just going to shove it right over. Medium refinement should be adequate. Let's go slice this up. It doesn't need to be fine. Set it normal quality. Um, I think we can work with that. Infill should be all right. Material, oh no, definitely that needs to change to ABS. Okay. Double check our temperatures. Yeah. Speed, I can live with. Travel, I'm sure is good. Cooling, we'll leave it on, see what happens. Should be fine. Uh, no support required for this one. We're going to change that to a brim. Eight millimeters should be sufficient. There is no dual extrusion. There is no special mode, and we should not have any experimental items. Okay, excellent. Let's go see what that looks like. Ooh. Oh. Keep forgetting that the buttons are different in Cura than they are Fusion. All right, so. Now what? Let's. Change that to 1.2. All right, off it goes. And if we bring up our printer monitor here, Uh, I just heard the light, the camera light on the printer click, so that's good. Oh, Fusion, why do you do that? No, get out uh, there. Okay. Uh, we'll update that later because we're already printing. There's the bed. I like this tornado, uh, 120 volt AC 
heat bed on it. Gets hot nice and fast. All right, so that is what layer one will look like. As soon as it's warm. All right, so this is the piece. Turned out fairly well. I can't show you the fitment because, well, I'm recording on the device that will fit in here, but it does fit. Doesn't have any play. My intention is to use these LED strips and to fix them around the border to make sure that everything I'm working on has good lighting. I have cut and tinned 
some jumper wires to go between the uh, the edges of the LED strips. Now I've just got to tin the pads, fix the wires, and get them adhered to the board. And I thought for half a minute there that my uh, soldering iron battery had failed. Let's see. Looks like it's working so far. All right, so far so good. Okay. Well, those are tinned up. This piece with the middle connection, right, where they have uh, joined two strips, is going to go on the side with the coupling, like so, so I can affix my power pigtail to those leads. Right, so, how am I going to do? Let's attack it from the other direction, shall we? More difficult than I thought it would be.
Doesn't want to seem to transfer any heat. Well, that did it. All right. All right, so two more wires to affix. Hmm. Right, that looks good to me. Now, let's see here. Do I want to connect the wires like so? So when they turn the corner, the same color, right? Like the positive would be on the inside and the red would be on the outside. Now, yeah, negative on the inside, positive on the outside. Or do I want to flip that so the wires would cross? I think we're going to flip it so the wires cross. That might make Navigating those corners just a little easier. All right, let's do that. Wow, that just really doesn't want to transfer any heat. There we go. That's good.
Wow. Look at that. It almost. Looks like we knew what we were doing. Almost. Let's try that one one more time. Yeah, all right, so let's just connect this up on these last two ends. Let me see what the plan is. This will then flip it like that to navigate the corner. We'll twist it like that to navigate the next corner. There's the next corner. So, undo that. Should have. And we do have positive connecting to. That's going to be a challenge. All right, well, unplug the iron, get our crap out of the way. And let's see what happens here. So I should be able to affix that one. And then that one. And then that one. 
And finally, this one on the side. Do we want to solder that on first? I think we probably do. So, now that I've disconnected the iron, let's reconnect it. Tin up this last little connection. And I, if I... If I did it right... Oh, I did. Excellent. Okay. Iron's hot. Let's get to it. Yep, I can work with that. You know what? I'm going to solder that pigtail on once it's affixed to the plastic. Let's just see what happens with what we've got. That is the business end. So... Oh, come on, adhesive backing. So I'm going to make sure those connections are centered. And things are approximately where I want them to be. And there we go. You know, we'll do those last.
All right. So there we go. Number two. And hopefully having those ones attached first will help us center these smaller strips. Okay, so, thinking right now that having the red wire cross the, over top of the black might have been the wrong idea. Maybe the black should have gone over top of the red. Too late now. Alright, so let's just... To fix this last one. Yeah, business end as my solder joints in the middle. Red is farther. In towards the center then the black one is let's tack those down So this soldering iron I've got here is uh, a TS-100. It's only running off 12 volt, give or take. Um, I love it. It heats up so fast for what it is. In fact, once I'm done making these two last joints, I'll show you how I run this thing. It might be interesting. You know what, let's get some solder on the end of there just to get good heat transfer. I think that solder underneath is... Uh, Lead free. Yeah, I hate working with lead free solder. All right, well, that's it. I'll grab a wall wart. We'll power it up and see what happens. Oh, and as for the, uh, the soldering iron itself, I run it from this battery pack here that I made. It's a... Uh, I think it's 3S8P. Yeah, I, I charge it once a month, and I solder all day long off it. It's fantastic. Speaking of fantastic, now that we're done with the iron... I've got this other box. This is a uh, 
uh, adjustable buck boost set to a 12 volt output. So I can just plug the battery straight into that. Ooh. Yowza. Yeah. I think I can work with that. Let me cut the video here, clean up some things, and uh, we'll come back. I'll get it mounted. We'll see how it looks. All right, so here's the old caddy, the old lights turned on. Nothing fancy. Let's turn on these new lights. Oh, I can definitely work with that. Bring over some colors. <sighs> A little bit of a glare. If it's a problem, I'll fix it. However, I think it's... Oh, there's a lot of glare off that, though. Ah, we'll burn that bridge when we get there. All right, well now I've got a new recorder. <laughs>